Mrs. Powell? What do you want? My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting the police with their investigation of the crime that took place this evening. Well, I've already gave my testimony, but very well. Could you tell us everything that you may have seen or heard? Yes, yes. I was selling my flowers as usual, and then the fireworks began, in honour of Queen Victoria. I enjoyed those. But then, all of a sudden, a young lad ran out of Half Moon Street and stopped just by me. He had a gun in his hand. He was like a ghost, and all covered in blood. It was dark, but I could see him, because of the flashes from the fireworks. And then? I screamed as loud as I could. I knew that a policeman should be on duty in the vicinity. He had no time to escape. Two constables got him. Then another constable came out from the very same street, and I heard him talking of a horrible murder. Mrs. Powell, did you hear the gunshots? I'm not sure. You know, what with the fireworks? Did you see anyone else leaving Half Moon Street prior to or at the time of the crime? No, sir. I did not. Even with all the fireworks, I was very attentive, as I'm always on the lookout for customers. My thanks to you, Mrs. Powell. Hmm. This mirror is turned towards Half Moon Street. Mr. Turner, you have stated that you remained close by your window after the crime, is that correct? Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. I stayed at my window until the policeman arrived to examine the dead bodies. That is very interesting, Mr. Turner. Constable Marrow stated that he did not see anyone at the window when he was running through Half Moon Street. Oh, oh well, I, I think Constable Marrow and me, we might have been distracted by the whistles and shouts coming from Whitechapel. We could have missed each other somehow. Do you understand what I mean? It was a bit of a stressful moment to tell you the truth, sir. Allow me to form my own theories, Mr. Turner. Would you mind showing me the view that you had from your window? Uh, not, not at all, Mr. Holmes. Please, follow me. Mr. Turner appears to live very modestly. This fire is dying out. It was last tended to over an hour ago. The papers are almost entirely burned. I am unable to see what's written here. These words are illegible. The papers were thrown into the fire just a short while ago. Mr. Turner was roused from his bed by the sound of gunshots. Mr. Turner was ra- The books on this shelf are in a mess. It looks as though Mr. Turner was trying to find something in a hurry here a short while ago. A perfect match. So, Mr. Turner broke his stick when it became stuck between the cobblestones. He did not mention that he was so near to the victims.
This kitchen knife is quite sharp. There are pieces of shredded paper scattered over the table. This kitchen knife was used to cut the paper. So, that's the view Mr. Turner had when he opened the window. The dead body of Kenneth Butler. Brian Vercotti's contorted corpse. Mr. Turner had a perfect view of the crime scene. He saw the bodies clearly, and Leighton Chapman standing over them. So Mr. Turner used a book to hide an object that he found on Kenneth Butler's body. The question is, what did he find? I can see prints from greasy fingers upon the cover of this book. Let us take a closer look. Well now, what a find! A precious jewel, concealed inside a book. A bracelet with a unique ram's head design. A distinctive feature of ancient Grecian artifacts, probably of the Hellenistic era. Mr. Turner, how would it be possible for a man of advanced years, such as yourself, to rush from his bed to the window in a matter of seconds, as you have stated? Well, uh, I'm, I'm able to move very quickly, despite my age, and when the situation requires it, Mr. Holmes. I highly doubt that, Mr. Turner. I observe that you suffer a severe limp due to your injured right leg. It would have taken at least ten seconds for you to approach the window. That means you could have easily missed something, or someone, in Half Moon Street during that time. You're right, Mr. Holmes. I could have missed something. But it did seem to me that everything happened so quickly. Ah, oh, time can pull tricks on you. And what of everything else that you told us? Mr. Turner, it is vital that we have your complete and true statement. Mr. Holmes, I do assure you that the other things I said were most sincere. 
Mr. Turner, you were not sincere with me. Not then, and not now. But, but, but Mr. Holmes... This, Mr. Turner, does not look like anything that a poor man might possess. It is worth more than the home that you live in. I, I can explain. No, merely correct me if I am wrong. You saw Leighton Chapman through the window. But you also noticed a glittering object on the ground, this precious jewel. You walked down and took the bracelet from the body of Kenneth Butler. And when you heard the whistles, you hurried away. That broke your walking stick. It caught fast between the cobbles. Constable Marrow was unable to see you in the window as you were climbing up the stairs on your way back to your flat. Upon returning home, you hid the precious jewel inside a book. Mr. Holmes, please don't send me to prison. I didn't do anything bad. I'm just a poor man. When I chanced upon the bracelet, I saw it as an opportunity to make a little money. I was desperate. I only took the bracelet, that's all I swear. You made a mistake by lying to me. But you are not a criminal. I believe that. Although I must return this bracelet to its rightful owner. Mr. Holmes, whatever brings you here so late at night? I am interested in the case of young Leighton Chapman. He was arrested earlier this evening and accused of a double murder. I beg your pardon? That case is quite clear to the police. Or are there any new facts that we don't know about? <laughs> Who knows, Inspector? Look, you are free to investigate, of course, Mr. Holmes. Chapman was arrested with a revolver in his possession which you can find in the evidence room. The suspect himself is in custody. Did you find anything else on his person? A few personal belongings. Nothing particular, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Lestrade. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. And it seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. And it seems as though... Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. A cheap watch, bought with his own money, no doubt. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco. Nothing interesting.
please escort this suspect for interrogation. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. Calm down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're... Sherlock Holmes. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Holmes. I I'll tell you everything. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. I left my work, and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering Half Moon. Then suddenly, what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a third person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head, and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead, and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. I, I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. I saw that one had blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it, and then I followed the third man. Interesting. Pray continue. I turned the corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I, I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds. But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. And then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half-blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. Layton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark. And he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm. And what about that? Nothing so special. He, he was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps... It's strange, but... I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I oh, know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was, it was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested, and he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish. Unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Holmes. I was just being brave and stupid. I'm sure that you were, but I believe that you may have recognized one of the victims, Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? 
However, could you know that? You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? Now, you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released and when I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man.